Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals, and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello, and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. It is so great to have you listening today and tuning in. And this episode, I feel like a lot of people need to hear. And that might be you listening to this, or you might have tuned in because you're like, I don't know if I'm impatient or not. But how to manage being an impatient business owner is today's topic. And I think this is a really important one. If you are here because you know that you're an impatient person and therefore you're an impatient business owner or you've identified that within yourself recently maybe or that you have kind of seen that in your leadership it's maybe coming across that you're impatient then first of all I want to say well done for actually identifying that and really kind of sitting in that because one of the main kind of first hurdles for this is to understand if you are an impatient person and if you are someone who struggles with being impatient. Now, one thing I would say is that if you're impatient in your life overall, yes, that probably does mean that you will be impatient in business, but it doesn't have to mean that. And it also can mean that people who are not normally impatient can become impatient when they have a business. So I just want to say you're not alone if you feel like in life you're you are quite patient and then when it comes to business you feel like you're not. That is something I've seen time and time again and it is quite normal. So first of all, well done. The second point to make today is that I have seen impatient, I keep saying important, it's impatient, (laughs) impatient business owners and how that plays out for a long time. I am someone who loves working with impatient people, but it does take a certain skill set and many of my clients, a lot, a lot, a lot of them are impatient. I mean, it's hard to put a percentage on how many, but like, a lot, a lot, a lot of people who I work with are impatient. Now, that's really interesting because I think impatient people make really great entrepreneurs and a lot of the kind of characteristic traits of impatient people are those of entrepreneurs. So this is very much a a territory that I think is normal. However, the whole point of doing this episode is because there's some really key things I think you should know about and to kind of think about as you go through your journey as an entrepreneur And as a leader, because I think the leadership piece here really comes into play, especially if you are an impatient person slash business owner. So what I have seen is that people can really struggle in business when they're impatient, but they can also use it as a superpower. And that's the thing I want to straddle between today of these two kind of areas. So one of the things that I really see a lot is people just giving up too soon, which is something across the board, obviously. Giving up too soon is a really big one of people struggle to just keep on going. And being impatient is really linked sometimes to resilience and building resilience inside of yourself, which is obviously a key emotional intelligence tool and a key kind of mindset that you kind of need to adapt and learn and grow into as an entrepreneur. But when we are impatient in business, it really can deter us. It can really like throw away our tracks, our plans, our strategy. And you can really be left in a bizarre state of confusion. Because if you are an impatient business owner, you will do a lot of things based out reward. And lots of things where it's like, this thing has to mean X, Y, and Z thing. And if X and Y and Z thing doesn't happen, then there's this resentment, this unhappiness, this frustration. Now, again, what I'm saying here to you is that this is okay and normal. It's not great all the time, but I'm saying that this isn't a podcast about trying to become not impatient. (laughs) I'm not on this episode going to try and say, let's all become really patient people and this is how you do it. Because some of this is ingrained into you. Some of it is learned behaviour and we're going to talk about that. But, you know, a huge amount of it can be that sometimes people are patient and sometimes people aren't. And so I am very wary of trying to remove something from someone's makeup that doesn't need to be removed because that's extremely hard whoever we are hardwired to be as human beings it's about us layering things on top it's about us advancing ourselves as individuals it's about tweaking things it's not about us trying to 
become different people in the process. Because yes, it is possible, but it's very challenging and difficult. And I want you to own being impatient, you know? That's something, as I said, many clients, and maybe you listening to this, you identify as impatient, you know that you are, and that is okay. Some people will say to me, you know, I'm really not patient. It might be on like a, a intake onboarding form. They'll say like, you know, I'm impatient. <laughs> you just need to know that. And that's really interesting because I have a set of tools that I use with clients who are impatient to really help them kind of work through that in their business. So yeah, so one of the things we see is this idea of, you know, this need for results to happen. The other side of that as well is that we get a lot of challenge when it comes to trying different new things because people get very fixated on results. So a lot of people who are impatient are very results driven, very, quite often numbers driven as well. Like not, I'm not saying maths and, you know, not like that you're a mathematical genius, but just about you like hard data. You like to see what is happening, whether that's cash coming in, whether it's numbers on social and on your market. And you become very quite like transactional in the way that you approach business. So a lot of people who are impatient business owners tend to need to know like, what what is it going to do? What does it mean for me? You might struggle to do something without understanding what is the next result. And that is something I've seen a lot. Now, what needs to happen is you have to learn to work with this thing you've got, in my opinion. As I mentioned, I don't think this is about let's all become really patient people. Obviously, if you want to go down that avenue, great. And that, you know, you can do lots of things to become more patient. But this is not the episode about that. I want to think about how can you learn to work with this characteristic trait and this, you know, this part of you that exists. So one thing to remember is this can be massively advanced, like you can use it to your advantage. You can push projects forward a lot quicker. You can implement stuff. I find that people who are impatient can implement really fast. So you are probably someone who can like, you know, have a strategy session and then go and actually do what I'm telling you to do within like 20, 30 minutes. That is amazing. That's how you're going to get results. And it's really encouraging. So all of this kind of thing is really great. Like it's, it's amazing. And I, I think it's really important to champion that and for us to work out, you know, what can we do to kind of keep the, the positivity of this going. So implementation is normally great. The other thing that you can do to work with it is to plan in things in your diary so your kind of weekly schedule needs to be really solid because if you're impatient you will kind of push barriers on things you're probably quite a boundary pusher not in a bad way necessarily although it can be but more so just you will like push and push and push because you become fixated sometimes on things so you might find that And I'll laugh if anyone's listened to this and you're like, this sounds like you're in my head. I might not be. You might be like, I'm resonating with some, but not all of it. But if you're resonating with all of it, that's okay. I promise there's nothing creepy going on. (laughs) I just have worked with a lot of impatient people and really helped them to kind of grow their businesses. You become fixated on things. So sometimes people will, and you know, they come and work with me and they, they become very obsessive. And again, you can use that in healthy amounts to aid your business. And then it can also become a bit much. So it's about you, when I'm talking about schedule and weekly schedules, you have to get a really clear work and order and work and pattern going, which will prevent you from going too far on this rabbit hole of things that you are doing. And I think this is really important. So this might show up as projects don't actually fully get finished or you make a lot of progress with something and then you just leave it or something never actually fully gets launched or a team member kind of gets half of what they need but then there's still a bit like you're like oh I should have actually done that for them and helped them a bit further those are kind of signs where for me I'm like let's look at the schedule and what you're doing and your time your time management really needs to be somewhat controlled because that kind of allows you to sit in rhythm and sit in consistency and sit into this play out of what we want to happen Again, remember, it's not about us pulling the impatientness out of you. It's just about how do we manage it and use it to, you know, the best of your ability. The other thing I would say is if you are an impatient business owner, I would encourage you to lean into the sales in your business and your sales role within the business. So if you are someone who has a team of five and 10 and maybe there's someone who helps you with sales, great. 
or if you're a one man band and you are doing this or you've got you and a VA or something like that, which obviously, you know, I mention on here all the time, you can go and make a million pound business with just yourself, you and a VA, you and someone else, like the size of your team doesn't really to me mean much in the sense of it just depends what industry you're in and and how big your team needs to be, whether it's employed or freelance doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me in the sense of what this context of this episode is it's about where can you play to your strengths so people who are impatient in business they might not be sales pros and they might not be like sales geniuses but they can learn sales pretty quickly and I found that people who are impatient business owners often are really good at selling in a really ethical nice way but they are quite good at grasping sales concepts and then actually going and doing enough to win enough volume to actually see results so we've got to remember that you know sales is great and you've got to learn sales skills but the biggest issue we have is that people just don't do enough of it once they've got that sorted and but for people who are impatient if I can give them a sales strategy and say right I need you to go and do x amount of you know sales calls or x amount of this thing or go and do x amount of marketing they often as long as they've got the strategy will run and do it and so if that is you really consider about using the sales department in your business as a kind of way of an output for you to really go after and utilize this energy that you have because most people who are impatient it's kind of like an energy now that is not necessarily like a high vibe energy it can be a low lying energy but there's an energy somewhere where you're kind of like oh right next thing let's go can't wait blah, blah, blah. that kind of vibe is what you need when you're making sales and so really that's another thing that I really would recommend to think about when you are using it to your advantage this idea of being you know an impatient business owner I want you to list out all the things that have positively helped you and negatively helped you when it comes to being an impatient leader and business owner and I would have it for business overall and then as your leadership as well because obviously depending on your business leadership means different things to you it might be that you're leading a team it's leading your community it's leading your industry wherever you sit in that I would argue that if you're listening to this podcast you probably are a leader you're a leader of something and you know it's about us really thinking about how is this affecting you so I'd love for you right now to do an exercise where get that on a piece of paper and make that really clear for yourself and be open and honest and think like right this is affected by this is it positive is it negative or even like does it sit between the two and where is the fine line because often it's the nuance and the fine line that really makes the difference with this kind of thing so really kind of do that exercise and take a few minutes to think about that and to look at what does that mean for you in your business because there might be like a real light bulb that goes off or there might just be this thing that you thought I've never thought about that but actually that's really interesting so the other side of this that I do want to touch on I've tried to keep it quite positive but I want to talk about how this will damage you as a business owner and as a leader because I think this is really important when you are building a business you have to learn to be patient and you've got to really learn it fast because business is hard and it's long and it's drawn out and many of you listening will know that because you have already built businesses and you're already doing lots of things and you're probably looking at how do you grow what you've already got and how do I scale it and double it and triple it and quadruple it and do all the things but I think for me when I'm helping people get to that you know the multi six figure mark the the seven figure mark and beyond it's about how do you lean into patience and longer term thinking, longer term vision, detaching yourself from instant gratification and moving into delayed gratification. And if you can't work on this and you don't work on it and you don't commit to trying to really grasp these concepts fully, I don't just mean like understanding what they are and kind of thinking, I'm thinking, I'm talking like you actually embodying them in your business and in your work, your growth will struggle at some point. Some people do get, I don't want to say lucky, but they do hit a set of circumstances where they can grow really quite fast and be impatient and for everything just to kind of align perfectly and it all kind of just goes and it's like woo and there's this real like momentum built and that's amazing I love that but what I have found and obviously this I'm not saying this is exactly for your business it might not you can prove me wrong but what I have found as a general consensus is at some point 
it does come and bite you on the ass. Whether that's in five years, six months, ten years, there is at some point where I don't want to say it comes crashing down because that sounds very dramatic and very like, I don't know, deterministic, but it just hits at a different way and you're like, oh, okay. Now, if you're listening to this and you are a partnership or, you know, there's multiple directors in the business and you have business partners and all the rest of it, when you're picking your business partners, (laughs) be really careful of like trying to match up different things and many of you will have complementary skill sets to each other. So I do work, for anyone who doesn't know, I work with people who are in, you know, two, three, four people in a business together. And I can specialise in helping people with that. And particularly in family businesses as well. So often I can work with people who are family and are running businesses together and there's multiple people. What I've found works the best is if you all have random different things. (laughs) And you can all have similar things, you know, you're going to have similar interests. But if you can pair up an in-person person with quite a like delayed gratification-y type vibe individual, them two together can create a beautiful connection and a beautiful beautiful result. I'm not going to lie and say that that's always easy because sometimes the relationship side of that can get challenging because from a decision-making perspective, it can get a bit heated sometimes, but that's where some of the magic happens. And so I've just gone off on a side tangent here, but if you are in that partnership, business partner realm, really think about how is your being impatient affecting the other people that you're with and the other people who help you in your business? Because that's going to really impact. And so you, I would go and ask them, you know, I'd go and say to them, hey, can we have a chat for five, ten minutes? Whether that's verbally, whether you want to get them to write stuff down, like however that's best to communicate for you and your business as your senior leadership team. Think about, you know, does my lack of patience bother you? Is it a problem? When has it been a problem? What do you love about it? What has it helped us to do? What is it that, is there ever times when me being impatient you feel like has negatively affected the business? Like have these conversations is really important because this is the stuff that's actually going to get this longer term shift going on and the reason I'm taking time to talk through this today with you and have this you know discussion is because this is a high level conversation this is the conversation that has to be had when you're making these big moves and when you're scaling whether you're exiting a business whether you're merging with a business like whatever you're doing this is the type of conversation we need to be having because this is the leadership conversation that's going to be the difference between people staying in your organization and going and this is the real key part of it of like we're no longer like a lot of your journey now if you listen to this is not going to be about the like real like day to day it's about your leadership it's about your long-term vision it's about where are we going and some of that is granular and very very like tiny And then some of it's macro and some of it's very like long-term stuff. And that's the joy, you know, of of when people come and work with me. It's that constant shift. It's like, you know, 10 minutes we can be talking about something that's so granular and a specific situation and a specific thing. And what do we do with this? And then we can be talking about, right, 10 years time, what's the business? Or what's how we're selling it? Or how we exit? And all of these things. And I think that's the real key difference for this conversation today is for you to think about what does this mean? for you because you're here and listening to this podcast because you're into personal development you're into really making sure that you are making a difference in the world you're into your business you're into progressing so you're here for the right reasons and I'm so glad you've changed into this episode today because I feel like this is really going to allow you to go deeper and really think about what is it that this means for me so in terms of you know we've talked about it can be really damaging The other way it can be really damaging is that people quit. I'm just going to be honest. People quit too quickly. And I mean quit on strategy, quit on plans, quit on goals, quit on everything. Like people quit really quickly. And in 2023, which is when we're recording this, 20, no, no, we're in 2022. Come on, it's me. Couldn't time, it's just getting away from me. 2022, you know, we really have to learn that everything has become longer and more complex than it was two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. So this idea of, you know, sales processes have gotten longer for a lot of people, not everyone, but for most people, you know, the amount of objections people are going to give before they buy has increased. The effort it takes to find really good team members is increased. We've had to extend that runway. 
And so really think about, yeah, do you know what? This is not just about me and my personality. It's about how has the world changed and where do I need to meet the world for where it's at in order for me to really progress? And I think that's a really interesting conversation because as we go into 2023, got the the year right, (laughs) it's going to become even more so relevant, in my opinion. Because we're going to need a lot more clarity and a lot more understanding around purpose and objectives. And objective is something, objectives is something that is really going to come into play in 2023, in my opinion, for leaders in their organisations and not just becoming these, like, and I'm not talking about goals, I'm talking about clear strategic objectives for different areas. And that also is going to mean for you as a CEO, director, business owner, whatever you call yourself. So the flip side of this and what we've mentioned and briefly touched on is talking about let's learn to play the long game. This to me is just really going to like change it for you of like let's start playing the long game. And I literally mean let's play a game. (laughs) Some of you will have to play a game with yourself. You need to play a game of right like let's just play the long game. And for some of you, I need to extend, I need for you to extend what you believe the long game is. So for some people, and if you're impatient, that you might think in your head the long game means like a year, three years. And that's fine if you do. I'm not here to question like whether you should, you know, what your parameters should be. That's your personal interpretation. But what I am here to say is the long game now in business is changing. And the long game in business for me is thinking five years 10 years. Now, 10 years is a long time. People talk about like 10 year plan. 10 years is a hell of a long time. It's really difficult to plan. Like I'm someone who plans. I help businesses plan. I love planning. I'm obsessed with planning, but that is very hard to plan for 10 years. And in some cases it's a waste of time. But when I'm talking about playing the long game, I want to be clear that I'm talking for me, you know, five years. I'm not talking about like 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. That's not okay. That's not enough for me. It's, it's not, it's not, it used to, you know, it could be, it went like well, one time, you know, in three years, you could, the stuff that could happen was so crazy that like it was, you didn't really need to think past three years. But now I really think it's important to think about this five year idea and, you know, five, six years. And I'm not saying that all those amazing things can't happen in three years. I'm not saying that in 12 months you can't transform things. You can. But I think it's about being realistic and being really like open and honest with yourself about what you're committed to doing. So thinking about playing the long game, thinking about how are your actions every single day aid in the vision in this longer term long game. And also thinking about what is the vision and what is the kind of vibe for that time because a lot of us are like living in dreamlands where we have these ideas in we head of what we want the business and the brand to be but then when that actually comes into reality it's not actually as like fun and exciting as it is in our head and it's because we haven't visualized enough and haven't gotten clear enough and haven't fully like made into the like current reality of what that would actually feel and be like so we we have to take some time to really migrate into that and sit in it and really understand it and think about yeah do you know that is the vision for me that is where we're going but that's really fucking hard for some people you know it depends you know if you're neurodiverse if you are you know even I was gonna say impatient like for some people if you're impatient you will really struggle with this like massively long-term vision and that's okay there's no like what I don't want this episode to be is that you feel like people who are patient are these like amazing people and you should be a patient person. That's not what I'm saying. Because as I mentioned before, there's huge benefits to being impatient. But what I am saying is that this is a time for you to really think about what does this mean for me in my business? Now, leading on to playing the long game is the art of long term, I call it long term gratification, but you know, delayed gratification versus instant gratification so how do we really lean into delayed gratification and for me I think that is the bit that is really going to set apart the people who build a real business that is solid and is really robust in like mega years time versus a quick kind of flash in the pan business now again nothing wrong with a quick flash in the pan business depends what you're building 
You don't have to build something that's going to change the world. You don't have to change something that's going to, you don't have to create something that's going to be here for the next like 20, 30 years if you don't want to. Like this is all about nuance and, you know, I'm having this conversation with you and I hope it feels like we're having a conversation in your ears direct to you. But there's also many other different types of people who are listening to this podcast. So some of it's going to resonate and some of it isn't. But think about what kind of business are you trying to create? And then what does that mean for you? What are you doing right now that's not serving that vision and not serving where you want to go? Write it down. Let's get this written on paper, you know? Let's write down all the things I'm just talking about here and and link in for you exact examples of what that means. The art of long-term gratification is the real reason that I'm like harping on about it and then I think you have to really lean into it is because long-term gratification will massively affect your decision-making skills and this is the piece that I don't think many people piece together. Your decision-making skills in your business are like one of the most important things and it's one of the hardest. I'll be really open and honest with you. For me, decision-making skills is the thing I still struggle with. It's really hard. It's not easy. And some of you will think, well, what do you mean? I don't mean just like making a decision on day-to-day things. Like, that's fine. I can pretty much do that. I mean making big decisions or making them at speed or not thinking about them for too long so for me personally I don't like making really fast decisions if it's something about a big thing so I like to drag it out but my problem is I drag it out too long sometimes you might be the complete opposite you might be like I make these decisions too fast and then I regret them whichever side of the coin you're on it's okay it's just about us recognizing that and thinking about how do we improve our decision making skills now Solid decision-making skills, again, is another emotional intelligence capacity, another emotional intelligence way of thinking. So decision-making skills is something that will have been affected by, you know, the trauma you've gone through in your life. And I don't think many people talk about this a lot, but many of us struggle with decision-making skills based on the trauma that we've gone through in our lives and based on, like, the thing that certain people might have made decisions for us that we haven't made but have directly impacted us and therefore the effects of that we've lived with and that can be really hard for us to kind of grasp and keep a hold of. Stay with me here, I know I'm going quite deep but I think this is important to kind of delve into. Some people, you know, will, if you are someone who makes decisions really fast, it can be because you feel like everything's going to be taken away from you and again that might be down to something that's happened to you in the past of like, whoa, yeah, And you might be able to think of an example of like, yeah, do you know what? Like, we didn't make this decision and this kind of just completely left. And so it wasn't available anymore. And so now I'm like so into like making fast decisions. Like there will be a lot of an explanation behind why you struggle with that. But you will, and not even struggle, but why you are the way that you are. But it's just about us thinking about how does being impatient affect our decision making skills? And in business, you know, I'm on, I've just said to you, I'm on one side of the spectrum where I'm actually working on trying to be more concise and be more clear in my own personal decisions that I make. But you might be on the other side where you're like, I think I need to slow down, mate. I think I don't need to be as like aggressive and as like constant on making decisions really fast. And so think about where does that lie for you? And what specifically is the impact of being impatient? What has that had on you? And what does it continue to have on you? Now, moving to the next part of this is to talk about habit formation. This is the difference, I think, of like tying this all together and to really kind of create something that's actionable for you to go away and do. So what you need to learn to do to manage and to also optimise and use the fact that you're impatient as a business owner is to create habits. Stacking habits, you know, habit stacking is great, but just creating habits in the first place, creating routine, I think is really important for you as an impatient business owner. Now, of course, at this point, I'm talking about habits. I'm going to talk about James Clear and say, go and read Atomic Habits, which is a book if you haven't already. I'm sure you've probably read it. I'd actually read it again. I, I tell you what I would recommend. Listen to it on audio book. Is that what you call it? Like audible, that kind of thing. I would recommend doing that. It's really great. He reads it. I'm pretty sure he does. And that's a nice way to kind of consume it. Obviously, that book goes into way more depth than I can hear about habits and why we need them and what it does to you and blah, blah, blah. 
So definitely go and kind of read that and listen to that. But the general consensus that I'm suggesting here is that the more that you can, this isn't a word, but habitize (laughs) your life and your business and your work and career, the easier it's going to become for you to, one, get a lot done and grow your business, but also really use and harness the joy and the kind of specialty you have of being an impatient business owner. But it will help balance it and it'll help it become less of a like negative thing and more of a measured, useful tool. Because we want to make it into a tool. And that's the thing I think is important of like, let's use your impatient trait as a real tool for you to progress forward and to move into your business and to step into your next level of leadership, whatever that may be for you. So that's what I'm going to say on that one. Go and kind of check out your habits, go and learn and and create some and also be realistic with that. So again, don't just go and like try and change your whole life and add in 25 million habits. Like let's just take it slow. Let's pick one or two things and add them in. And next month, let's add another in and let's start stacking and let's start creating bookends to our day I think that can be really helpful for you you know how do you start your day how do you end the day how do you start the working day how do you end the working day what do you fill in between that doing the calendar stuff that I spoke about before all of this stuff will then create containers for you to harness and utilize and empower yourself with being a patient and all the other amazing things that you are but it won't at the do it at the detriment of the business and it won't kind of just completely run you off tracks because you've got to start making these like decisions based on data which is you know something I harp on about a lot about let's make driven decisions but also making decisions based on vision and strategy and longer term ideas rather than short-term outcomes instant like yes I want to do that yes impatient like ah buzz energy all of that kind of stuff that you know sometimes can make you have the best decision you've ever made in your business and that's why I'm not saying pull this out of you because honestly I I really believe that some people have their best ideas in an impatient moment they have their best decisions they sign the best client you know that's all good stuff it's just about us balancing it and making it a bit more easy to kind of deal with the other thing I wanted to remind you on here is that you are probably addicted to reward satisfaction and I'm just gonna kind of put that one there so you are pro- and I'm saying probably because I can't say you will be, but a lot, a lot of people I work with who are impatient, and again, that's not a bad thing, it's just they are impatient and they would say so themselves, like, I'm impatient and therefore I'm probably an impatient business owner, are addicted to rewards. You might have been brought up using reward satisfaction theory. If you don't know what that is, maybe go and have a Google. I'm not going to go into it here, but, um, you know, you've maybe in your previous work history and career have been in a corporate environment or in a culture that is hugely based around rewards and that's not a bad thing again like reward satisfaction for really works for me personally rewards and using rewards to motivate myself is massive that is like one of the main ways that I am motivated and that's how I you know when you do the work of understanding who you are as a business owner and a leader you kind of learn this stuff so it's not about again removing the reward it's about are you addicted to it and are you negatively obsessed with it which a lot of people are who are you know impatient because you constantly want the next thing you constantly need some kind of hit you constantly want to keep going and what I would say to that is and we could do an episode on this maybe if someone wants to kind of talk about how do you remove or kind of manage this more instead of rewarding yourself and the team and the culture or whatever like it it depends how ingrained this is in your business it depends how old your business is it depends how many people's in your business let's just talk about it from a perspective of you as a business owner and ceo as a leader what i would encourage you to do is instead of maybe rewarding yourself for like the goal that you've achieved which you know is great to do i would maybe try and start rewarding yourself for behaviours that you're enlisting that help you with long-term gratification or help you with longer-term thinking. So what I'm talking about is rewarding yourself for actually doing the thing that you know you need to do for long-term gratification versus doing the thing that hits, like, when you've hit the goal. Now, they're probably the output, you're essentially going to reward the output that gets you to the goal anyway, 
but it's not that you're waiting for the goal to then celebrate because a lot of people find that this is where it gets very addictive because it's like constant goal, goal, goal. But what I'm saying to you is, is that will have gotten you so far in your business and it's probably really helped you, right? Because to get off the start line in business, you got to do that. You got to chase the goal. You got to chase the sales. You got to go, 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 go. Got to make some money. You got to get rid of new, blah, blah, blah. But if you're listening to this podcast and you're in a situation where you're leading and it's about scaling and it's about movement, and it's about let's let's move and let's grow and expand, those goals are going to be bigger goals. They're going to be harder to hit. You're not going to be able to hit all of your goals on like a daily basis. Back at the beginning, you might have been able to hit a goal every month. You know, you might be able to do it every week. It might be like sign three clients, bang, that's the goal. Your goal now probably is nowhere near sign three clients. It's probably, you know find this amazing team member for this specific department and then hire this person like that sort of just gonna take a longer time or it might be you know one of your goals is to create a really solid growth strategy for the next three years well that's not gonna be able to happen overnight and so therefore you and your impatientness will start making bizarre decisions and get really agitated and start being really strange and some of the things you do and your team will be like what is going on with this person and that's a great option you know a great opportunity for you to recognize this there might be times that you can think about where you think god what was i doing and you realize you're in a state of like seeking out the thrill seeking out the reward and again that's why i'm suggesting to you like it's about maybe rewarding the behavior for you than it is the actual outcome because if you do you know you're at a point in business where if you do the work and you have a solid strategy and you know whether that's you have someone internally who helps you with strategy whether you externally get support, whether you come and work with someone like me, if you have that strategy, you know that as long as you implement, it probably is going to work to some degree. The the goal is probably not that. The goal is actually getting everyone on the same page, culture-wise, fit, making sure everybody understands the goal and then actually supporting them to implement. So your goal anyway, if you look at your goals as a CEO and a leader, you are your goal is probably massively driven in long-term gratification anyway because, <laughs> because when I'm setting goals for people business owners leaders CEOs directors it's very rare that I'm setting them a goal that's like achievable straight away and that's why you often have long-term support because it's like how do you keep that going because that's the question a lot of the time your goals as the phase of business you're in like the goal's not meant to be simple it's not meant to be easy There's a reason that you are a leader. You chose a path for a reason. And whilst I get that this might not be what you thought it was going to (laughs) be, this is kind of part of that journey for you. It's an adventure. And this is the stuff that's going to push you. This is the stuff that's great. This is the stuff that's like this long-term gratification, this delayed gratification, this long-term goal achievement is about you really like sitting in it, sitting in the trenches. This is what you're paid for, you know? Let's, let's let's talk about that. People often think, you know, in the world that CEOs are paid crazy amounts of money. And I'm talking corporate here. I'm not necessarily talking about you and your business, but let's just zoom out for a moment. You know, a lot of people think CEOs are really overpaid. Now, in some organisations, we'll argue, yeah, they probably are. But there's many people who aren't. But the reason they aren't and the justification for that is because of some of the things they're dealing with. You cannot expect to grow your business, and I'm switching back to you now, and grow your business, do all these things you want to do, and still be working from the same emotional intelligence level and the same skill set that you were when you were trying to make, you know, five grand a month or like trying to hit that first like ding, win, ding, next win, ding, got the website, ding, got this. Like think back to who you were when you started the business. This isn't about time, by the way, as well, because some of you, like, especially some people can work with me, they can grow hugely in really quite quick succession. So this for you might only be like a 12 month or a 24 month period that I'm talking to you. Some of you, it might be 10 years, 15 years, 20 years since that situation. It doesn't, the time itself is not hugely necessarily as important. It's about you recognise and have like, shit, yeah, this is the stuff that I've got to actually do. This is what I'm getting paid for because I'm getting paid to like up level. And that's your job, a lot of it. Now, we could go off on a whole tangent of what, what is a job role of a CEO and what is, should you be your role as a leader and etc. 
But just to plant that seed for you, to think about where are you at with that? Where are you at with getting really open and honest? And this conversation you're listening to right now that you've been listening to for 40 odd minutes is really where we've started to talk about this. And I hope this has been a really personal introspection for you to think about all these things and then for you to continue this journey going on yourself and do maybe some of the exercises we've talked about to kind of move this forward. The final point that I want to talk to you about that is, I would argue, one of the most important in terms of actually actionable things and things you need to look out for and do is, drum roll please, I'm really bad at sound effects. <laughs> in case you haven't already guessed, is that if I can give you one piece of advice as an impatient, very motivated, aspirational, inspirational, goal-getting business owner, is you need a coach. You need a mentor. You need somebody, I'd argue like a consultant, mentor, coach, advisor. Advisor's a good word on this. You know, someone there who you can see who will support you. And that's not that's not the main point. The main point is, and someone who will tell you no. Somebody who will turn around and say, nope, you're not doing that. Or nope, I wouldn't do that. Or will put their foot down and really get you to question things and to look at what you're doing. Because you can have, and this is where a lot of people fail, in your business, you will be able to condition people in your team to start getting like you and being like you and loving it and really embracing it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but it can be very toxic to get everybody on your kind of tunnel of vision. I argue you need someone external to the business who fully understands your business and really gets you and your environment, but is able to really question you and isn't afraid and isn't scared to call you out on your bullshit or to say, X person, you're being impatient or X person, this isn't aligned to the main goal. What you've done this month or this week, your activity is not actually what you have said previously that the business is aligned and committed to doing. And this sounds so simple and so like, well, whatever, but that is really key. And I think that's why there's a lot of people who work with me who are impatient because they've all recognised that actually they need this level of accountability and this level of awareness and this understanding and they they really appreciate that you know they need to grasp this and keep a hold of it it can be your superpower but it is also can be very detrimental and destructive and so really really think about if you are listening to this and you don't have someone that i would argue you need to check in at least once a month depending on where your business is goals etc blah 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 it could be you know you need all sorts of things. But in terms of just this and what I'm talking about, in terms of like you, your leadership and this whole thing about being impatient in your decision making and emotional intelligence, etc, etc. I would argue you need at least once a month. If not, I would argue twice a month is most probably the best option. But once a month where you have someone who is prepared to be really open and honest with you. Now, how do you find that? It's a difficult thing because let me tell you, there are many people in coaching, mentoring spaces, consultant advisory services that will not do that. And I don't want to say it, they will lick your ass, but essentially they will do anything and everything just to keep you happy. You need to hire someone who is not set out to keep you happy. So yes, you know, I can do a shameless plug. Like that's kind of what we I do in the sense of like, I tell people what they don't want to hear. They hear stuff from me that they don't actually like sometimes. If they're working with me for like a long term period, I mean, there's going to be times where they really are annoyed with me. I'll be honest. Not hugely, <laughs> but they'll be, you know, they we disagree on things. They will, they're challenged on things. I will say, I don't necessarily think that's right, blah, blah, blah. And that's always your business. It's not ever something that I'm like, you must change that, blah, blah, blah. That's not how it works, just to give context in case you've never kind of had this sort of relationship. But it's about, you need someone who is very comfortable in saying no and challenging you and at the risk of, you know, (laughs) at the risk of the client not being obsessed with them is essentially what it is. There's some massive ego searching coaches. There's some massive like, 
you know, well, I'm just going to say it, it's like money grabbing people who are obsessed with like just keeping clients happy and it doesn't matter if they're not making progress because it's all about just get the money, get the money, get money. With me, it couldn't be further really from the truth. I know that me saying that's not going to help because if you start on eating, you never work with me, you're going to be like, well, of course you're going to say that. But yeah, my, my main point here is please get yourself some kind of support system because you're going to need it. And you're going to need it for the long term of your business. And that's what I always say to people. You know, a lot of people who pay to work with me on an ongoing long term basis, often it's just about them having that constant check in and having this space where they know they're going to get a brutal answer and an honest answer. And it's always with kindness and with love. Like, I want my clients to win, I want them to be amazing. I'm not ever just a dick for no reason. I'm not ever like cause just, I don't ever just disagree for the sake of disagreeing. It's always with something in mind. But it's about creating a culture inside your business, inside your little head of your executive brain. And when I say little head, that's not to like, I don't want that to sound like I'm not discouraging, what's it called? Like minimizing your brain. Your brain is amazing. But what I mean is, is like you have your business and that's a huge macro thing. Like it's massive, right? Then you have your support system and then you have you and then you have your brain. And your brain's like this thing that constantly is like providing all the answers that you need every day. And so I would really say you need a support system. You need someone there who can be like, May, what's this happening? What, what What's going on here? Or like, is this actually what you want? Or we had a discussion six months ago and now this is what you're saying. Is this still the same? Do you want to tweak the plan? Do you want to do this? Like all about just having that sound on board because those tiny tweaks can be the difference between you really thriving and then just staying stagnant and that's kind of a thing for you to whip in your head so if you listen to this you realize you're impatient and you want to help and you want me to support you come and speak to me go to instagram's the best way to find me and it's linked below my instagram and come and dm me and we can have a conversation about that and what options you have available If you already work with me, great, love it. (laughs) See you on the next session. If you have worked with me in the past and you want to kind of pick something up again and wonder what the options are there, come and speak to me because you have different options available to you. But all in all, you know, I want you to win. But I hope that this episode has maybe kind of enlightened you with some things and given you some things to think about. And I want to leave you on one note. And that is all the stuff we discussed today, the nuance, the small things, the little intricate, intricate? Yeah, that's how you say it. Details. The difference of like, do you hire a really quality, great coach who can really support you with your leadership and you don't? That is the, all of those things add up, right? It's all about the tiny little micro things that add up to being the difference between like, you're 100k a year and you're 400k a year or you're 400k a year and you're 900k a year or you're a million year and you're 4 4 million year this shift is monumental and it comes from such a small thing and so many people will overlook it and be like well it has to be strategy it has to be this it has to be that I'm a bloody strategist. I'm a strategy consultant. I bloody love strategy, right? But it has to work in tangent with other things. And this is one of the main areas that I am like confident. I'm like obsessively confident that is so key for you to manage and that will change the game. Because if you're doing all the strategy work and you're doing all the things, this is like another piece of the puzzle that has to be in place in order, in my opinion, for it to fully thrive. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can still make really good money, but it's just about this difference of, like, the the acceleration. And let's be honest, those differences I'm talking about, like the 100 grand to the 400 grand or the 400 grand to the 900 grand or the 1 million to the 4 million, that difference in each of those is huge. That's life-changing for you on a monthly basis and on a weekly basis and on a yearly basis, right? Because that extra bit is the bit where you actually get to take home a bit more cash, and get take home more money, and get home to actually do the shit that you built a business you want to do for. So this is why you've got to get interested in it. This is why I'm really passionate about it, because I'm like, hang on a minute, this is the bit where it's like, actually get clear on what you want, and then get support system in place to manage this, because that is what's actually going to get you to hit the goal beyond just like 
a number. That's that's the key thing. Anyway, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to love you and leave you. Tune back in next week for the next episode. Please, 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 if you like the podcast, will you leave a review? I just, I'd like you to leave a review, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> and whatever kind of platform you're listening on, there will be an option for you to leave a rating and review. Leave a five-star review or alternative, if you're not that much of a fan, but I'm gathering if you're at this point, you probably like it. You know, leave a comment, long comment, short comment, one word, who knows? Just, I'd love for you to do that. It helps other people find the podcast, which is quite difficult. I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but finding really quality, amazing podcasts is hard. They don't make that simple on the podcast platforms. So yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. And maybe share the episode with a friend, business colleague, team member, community, whatever. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind-the-scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time.